I moved to Japan for one whole year and now I'm back in the UK. What I did in Japan was a working holiday visa and that lasts for a year where you can travel, you can work, you can study, you can do whatever you want. There's no bounds in that visa. After the visa expiry date is over, you have to go back to your home country. I feel like there was a lot of different experiences in Japan which helped me just grow as a person and a lot of difficult parts as well. It's just one of those things what I want to share to you guys. Yeah, it's, I think my experience was very unique. So I moved to Japan and I came with my sister. When we first came, I was just showing them around Japan and that was a good way to kind of just break the ice and kind of get used to coming to Japan and that being as a holiday shared with my sister. So after that, it was time for me to live by myself. I was living by myself in this one room apartment in Japan. I started going to a language school and I went to this language school for around two months. And during this time, I think my experience was exactly what a lot of the people talk about online. I didn't have any friends and it felt almost felt like I was invisible in Japan. Not many people really tried to talk to me and I didn't really know how to kind of make friends or adjust this environment. Even the simplest things like going to the supermarket, going to the drugstore, to the pharmacy in English. And just doing those simple things just was like a challenge for me each and every time. Listening to the sales clerk speaking in Kegel, I just didn't really catch what they were saying. So I had a lot of anxiety going to these places and talking to these people because sometimes I wouldn't even catch what they were saying. And it made me think, man, I wish I studied more Japanese before I came, even though I was able to communicate at that point. The experience at first, not many friends, a lot of friends were busy at the time. So being able to just meet up with them just once and then the next time would be in a few weeks or months for some of the people. I wasn't able to have consistent meetings with people because the environment didn't really allow that. You know, going to language school, those people had their own lives to live. So I would usually only see them in class and that was it. So what I used to do to kind of combat that was go to a local Starbucks and just be surrounded by people, you know. I was surrounded by people, I was watching their lives and I was studying at the same time for the homework and my own kind of flashcards and other things. And that kind of made me feel like I was somewhat connected. And from time to time, some of these customers would just see interest in me. They'll just try and talk to me. They'll be like, hey, how's it going? Where are you from? Yeah, I felt like that kind of filled up the void a little bit and allowed me to kind of you know, feel a little bit included in the society there. After language school and move, moving from, you know, different places to places because, you know, the lease was quite, you know, short with these places. I was staying in like Airbnbs to begin with. Was it a good idea? It's really expensive. I just decided on a whim, like four days before, to just travel the whole of Japan by myself <laughs> from Tokyo all the way to Kumamoto. And I think that was a really defining experience because when I went on that experience, I really felt like, damn, we really did this. I'm by my own here and I can't really compare myself to other people. There's no guideline, there's no structure. It's just what I make of it. And I feel like that was really empowering to a sense because I had to make everything happen. I booked all the hotels by myself. I had to get around by myself. I had to ask help when I needed to. I made conversations with people like on the street in restaurants, so many places. I met up with friends along the way as well, some of the friends I've never met before. And I was just able to have such an enriching experience. I traveled from Tokyo to first off with Odawara, then to Shimoda in Shizuoka. Then I went to Numazu because I really like Love Life Sunshine. And funny thing about Numazu, I met this guy in the line when I was going to Love Life Cafe. And he was an American guy because I just heard English in the line. I was like, hey, let's just chat to this guy. He happened to really like Love Live and he was in Numazu just for another day. Same amount of time as me. So we went around that area in Shizuoka and we checked out all of the anime spots. And that was a really cool experience. So just having, you know, experiences like that, meeting people in a way, it was amazing. After that, I went to Nagoya. And in Nagoya, I met up with my really good friend Ruto and my friend Eri and another friend from the UK 
and I really enjoyed that experience. After Nagoya, I went to Osaka. Kind of met so many friends there. There's so many people in Osaka and that was amazing. So from Osaka, you can easily get to Kyoto, Nara and even Kobe. So I went to all those places. Interestingly, when I was in Kobe, I went to this place called, I think, Medikan Park, right? And it's by the sea and for whatever reason there was just a lot of school kids there and one of these school kids they just walked up to me and then they were literally just so amazed by my height they wanted to take pictures with me they're asking me all sorts of questions like what did i eat when i was younger what do i do as a job do i play any sports and they're really interested about me and it was quite cute <laughs> in that regard so that was an interesting experience he now follows my Instagram as well. Good guy, man. Good guy. I really hope he's doing well. So after Osaka, I went to Hiroshima. And in Hiroshima, it wasn't really a great experience because, you know, seeing history of the place and everything and being by myself. Yeah, it was tough, but maybe somewhat of a necessary part of just understanding the history. That was an interesting experience. Then going to Fukuoka and after Fukuoka, going to Kuromoto and then stopping by Hita in Oita. Hita in Oita is an interesting place because if you really like Shingeki no Kyojin, that's where the mangaka is from. So you can go to like real life War Maria and other kind of, you know, spaces where you can see Shingeki no Kyojin kind of merch and museums and stuff like that. So I'd really recommend that place, but you have to get around by car because the public transport isn't so great there. So after Oita, I went back to Fukuoka. Then I went from Fukuoka by plane all the way to Tokyo. And when I was in Tokyo, that's where, you know, my new life started. And I wasn't so well in the first month when I came back to Tokyo. I, was, I felt like my month of excitement and travel was over. And now I have to do all this serious stuff. I need to look for a job. That was hard. And I kind of looked for video editing jobs, but then I gave up. And I looked for part-time jobs and the first part-time job I looked for and applied for, I got it. The only problem is this part-time job is very different compared to all the other experiences I've done previously in video editing. But I just said to myself, we need this experience. And it's going to be in Japanese. I have the chance to speak some English as well, but it's mostly going to be Japanese. It will be enriching experience for me. The what actually happened is when I started the job, it was really hard. I didn't understand what people were saying to me. People didn't understand what I was saying sometimes. And I really thought, wow, I studied Japanese to this point only to not know anything. It was, it was tough. I'd wake up every morning just feeling really anxious, being like, oh, can I really do this? But I just thought to myself, I'm never quitting this job. The only way I can get out of this job is if this company sacks me. So I continued going and I learned a bunch of words in regards to the job. I learned how to do the operation properly. And through doing that and talking to like almost everybody I'd see, all of my coworkers, I was able to make lots of friends and I was able to improve my Japanese and communicate a lot better. And some of my friends, they only speak Japanese. so. They have enough patience and time and, you know, appreciation to, you know, give me the time of day for the conversation. I really appreciate that. So, yeah, that was definitely one of the highlights of my trips. So I worked there for six months and then I came back to the UK. That's my story, you know, staying in Japan. So in regards to learning Japanese, a lot of people would talk to me first because I was really tall and that turned into conversation. So I was able to talk to a lot of people on the way as well as make friends along the way and meeting up with people from language exchange apps like Hello Talk. And I feel like at first when I didn't have a lot of friends, that really did stunt me. And I thought to myself, what's going wrong? I'm meeting up with these people once and I've never seen people again. Is there something wrong with me? But I think the one thing what people don't really tell you about is to really make friends and establish yourself anywhere. It takes a lot. You have to try a lot of times before you find your people because not everybody's going to appreciate you. A lot of people already have their friend groups. So as much as we like to take it personally, it's nothing really to do about us, but it's to do about the situation. So I kept trying. And because I kept trying, I just kept meeting people in so many different places. And some of those people now are my closest friends in Japan. And some of the people who 
I knew before Japan, I became even close to them and we're really good friends. So now when I'm in Japan, Tokyo to be precise, like almost every day, I'm always meeting up with people and being able to speak to people. Most of my friends are Japanese, but some of my friends are also foreign and I'm able to speak to them in English. So it's good. Trust me, friends really make the experience. And that's the reason why I went over to kind of make new connections and understand the country more. So I think one of the interesting things about Japan is on the internet, it really does get a bad rap. Like as much as we kind of make Japan to be like one of the best places in the world, a lot of the internet like to, you know, cover the negative sides and make it seem like, you know, Japanese people are suffering to some degree and we got it so much better in the West. It's interesting because to some degree, you know, there are societal problems that they have that the West deal with in a particular way, what people prefer. You know, in other aspects, there's a lot of good going on as well. For the most part, with any concern, with any stereotype, with anything that was said on the internet, I never fully believed it. I was curious and I asked Japanese people whether this was true, what kind of experiences they have and what kind of life they live. I just discovered that a lot of people just live very individualistic lives. Like everybody's different. And because everyone's different, it kind of created this new opinion, right? That even though the Japanese culture is quite strong and there's still cultural expectations and things that you may have to do, right? What it really is a Japanese person. Because I just met so many personalities which made me really think, damn, this is cool. Everyone's unique. I guess now it's just time to talk about my own kind of personal growth in Japan. I went to Japan and, you know, I had a lot of doubts and just lots going on for myself. And I really wanted to, to change things, right? If you want to change your life, there's no clear path to do it. But there's just a certain amount of things where you want to understand. If you want to move to another country, especially if you want to escape a lot of your problems or something like that, there's only so much you can do because... With any problem which is related to your environment, you can remove yourself from that environment and those environmental problems will be gone. However, you're placed with another issue, which is the things which are not based on the environment, which were very much internalized by yourself. You then just have to deal with that. And what I have to say is because there was just a lot going on, there wasn't so much time to just think and be in my head about so many things. I just had to do. <laughs> I just had to do, I had to deal with a lot of what was in front of me. And that allowed me to just be more efficient and just accept the situation that I was in. The situation where at some points I couldn't communicate what I wanted to communicate. I had to try my best and use all the tools that I had at hand in order to get by, understanding everything, even though that's great. It's not a must, so understanding the gist and being able to go with that was what I did. So being able to do all that was, yeah, it just changed me to become just more sure of myself and more confident and, yeah, just taking less time to actually do things. So I'm grateful for that. So it leads to the last thing, dealing with difficult times. It's a hard thing to talk about because there's many different ways people deal with things. I think one of the best ways can be talking to people about it. But this is my personal advice. As long as I didn't talk to people about it so much, then I think that was good. But at the same time, I just want everybody to try their best and find the best way how they deal with that. So yeah, man, like living in Japan, it was really experience. And yeah, I just saw a lot. I dealt with a lot. I improved my language skills by using almost every opportunity to to speak to people. There's aspects where I wish I was better at Japanese so I could communicate more precisely. But what I learned is when it comes to communication, sometimes it's not about the words. It's not about the way, you know, you communicate being the most fluent. It's just about your personality. Your personality really is language agnostic. And as long as you can share that in some way or another, people appreciate you. That's what's the most important. You have to go to places where people appreciate you, people know what you're about, and they want to take you in. And the people who take you in, and they're willing to pick you up and stay with you through anything, those are the people to stick with. So 
I really hope this video helped, especially talking about Japan and my experience and everything one whole year. Yeah, it was a lot, but we made it. And I hope other people can make it too, no matter what level you're Japanese you are. If you have an interest in the culture, the country, and you do want to live there one day, I'll definitely recommend it as it will most definitely change your life. I wish everybody the best and I'll see you soon.